Hey everybody, it's Tosin yet again here with Focus Fire bringing you another gameplay guide for Heroes of the Storm. This one is about risk versus reward. And if the name of that topic is a little too vague, I'll further explain. In any match, you're going to be presented with lots of tempting opportunities. Maybe to take a merc camp, or push a lane and take a fort, or maybe try to gank a player. But no matter how tempting, whatever it is you're going for, you gotta weigh the risk versus the reward. So if the risk is really high and the reward is not that high, that's usually a bad decision. So I'm going to show you a variety of clips with good and bad decision making when it comes to weighing the risk versus the reward. In this situation here, me and my team are pushing forward into the enemy's territory. That's pretty much always risky when the enemy team is up. All five enemies are alive, and we are completely aware of this, so this is a very greedy play, and this is a very high risk, so let's weigh the risk versus reward. The risk here is that we are in the enemy's territory on their side of the map, and we have no vision on any of them, and all five are alive. That's a high risk in itself. When five enemies are up and you don't see them, and you're in their territory, you should assume that they are coming for you at any moment. Now taking a look at the minimap, there are only two objectives that the enemy team could be going for, their bruiser camp or their siege camp. That's a 50-50 chance that they'll show up at this siege camp, possibly as a five-man squad, so that's a really high risk. And what is the reward if they get away with this? Well, we can get four coins and a siege camp. That's a pretty small reward for how high the risk is. So as you can expect, this is not going to work out. This is a bit of a greedy play, and it's okay. I mean, sometimes you take chances and they work out, sometimes they don't. But generally speaking, taking risks of this level for such small rewards is not a good idea. And in this scenario, it didn't work out for my team. Now here's a scenario with a much better risk versus reward decision. Here we are going to win a team fight and kill, I believe, three of the enemies. So the decision is actually going to be pretty easy. So we decide to take advantage of the situation and go for the boss camp. Now, this is a very high reward with a very low risk. Three enemies are dead, and they have pretty long res timers, and all five of us are alive, so it's a 5v2 situation. Now, the enemy team does have a Nova alive, so of course there is a small chance that one of us might get caught in a root or a smash by the boss and then blown up by the Nova. But even then, even if one of us gets randomly picked off like that, it's still 4v2, so... The chances of them stopping us from taking this boss is unbelievably low. So this is exactly the type of low risk, high reward decision you want to be making on a regular basis. Now here's an example later against the same team where we go for a pretty risky boss attempt. Now this ends up being a bad decision because it's just too risky. Now we say, hey, the entire enemy team is visible in the bottom lane. As you can see, we see them on the minimap, so it's like... Even though they know we're going for this because they have creep and they have vision on us, we know that they know that we're going for it. So our goal here is to either kill it super fast before they have a chance to come and contest it, or if they arrive too quickly, we should just back off and stop attacking the boss and just teamfight if we have to. Unfortunately, our Sylvanas gets caught by Uther and Nova. He gets stunned and blown up by the oh-so-scary burst of Nova. I believe his intentions were to distract the enemy and slow them down to buy us a little bit more time to get the boss safely. Unfortunately, they just had a really good uh, catch opportunity with the stun and burst, and this didn't work out for us. So this ended up being too high of a risk, and the reward was really high. Getting a boss this late in the game is a really high reward. It's actually going to kill their keep and do core damage. So yes, the reward was very high, but the risk was also really high. So honestly, we probably should have been more patient, looked for a team fight or maybe an ambush and killed one or two of them and then taken the boss when the risk was a lot lower. So it ended up being okay, but it's still not the type of risky decisions you want to be making on a regular basis. Now this next clip is an unnecessarily risky move from the enemy Zagara. So here the Zagara can only see one enemy on the minimap. Only one enemy is visible on the whole map. He can also tell by looking at the minimap that there are no merc camps on the enemy side of the map to take. So if the enemy has no objectives or merc camps or anything like that to take, and they're not visible in lanes, where could they be? They're most likely coming to kill you. So what is the risk versus reward in this situation? So the risk is clearly very high. Now what is the reward that he's possibly going for? He's trying to kill towers to get, you know, decent chunks of experience for his team. But is that reward really worth this huge risk? His team is already higher level than us. They're more than a full level ahead of us. So he's actually giving us a good opportunity to catch up that experience gap. And those towers aren't going to move, so he could always come back and take them at a safer time. So given the circumstances, this reward is definitely not worth the risk. 
Now, pretty much everybody makes risky decisions at this point, so let's not be too harsh on the guy. I make those decisions all the time. But the goal is to minimize the risk and maximize the reward as often as you can. Now, here's a little bit of a strange situation. Our Illidan is farming the Bruiser Camp down at the bottom, and I stupidly get caught here. I was trying to poke around and scare the enemy off so my teammate could turn in coins, and I died, and then our Brightwing died. So, our screw-up is now putting this poor Illidan at a very bad risk. He was going for a pretty good reward. Getting the Bruiser Camp and getting some coins is a pretty sweet reward, and the risk wasn't that high because we had pretty decent vision on the map, and he knew his teammates were up that could easily cause distractions while he solos this camp. But because two of us got caught and killed, that puts him at a much higher risk. So the risk versus reward has shifted, and it's no longer worth the risk because he should be aware that the enemy team, after picking off two players, is going to go for the nearest objective to increase their advantage. So sometimes your teammates increase the risk and give you a tough call to make, but you have to learn to make the right call in these situations. Illidan should have said, ah crap, they're probably coming here right now, and I have six coins I don't want to lose, so I should just give it up and peace out, because it's not worth risking dying and losing those six coins. Now, although it is not his fault for being put in this rough situation, that's our fault, but when this happens to you and you get put in these situations, you have to make the right decision and get out of there. Was the Bruiser Camp really worth losing 8 coins and his life? Obviously not, but it's a tough decision and sometimes you have to make those calls. And these kinds of decisions make or break games, so if you can improve your decision making with the risk versus reward concept, you'll definitely increase your win rate substantially. But anyway, that is it for this Focus Fire gameplay guide. I hope you enjoyed it and I hope some of you found it useful at least. Got plenty more on the way, so don't forget to subscribe for more. Thanks for watching as always, and see you next time.